What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Today and as a follow up to the previous video, we are going to tackle the abstract factory method pattern. So if you haven't watched the previous upload or have no idea what the factory method pattern is, I strongly suggest you take a look at the video on the card above. The abstract factory is a creational design pattern that lets us produce families of objects without specifying their concrete classes. Think of it as using the factory method pattern multiple times or as scaling up factories to handle the creation of multiple distinct products. To better understand the concept at hand, let's bring back our previous example. While implementing the factory pattern, we made use of a restaurant that produces burgers. We had two types of burgers, oriental and classic burgers. Given the current implementation, if we want to add more cuisines or more types of burgers, all we have to do is extend the parent product, which is the burger class, and create a corresponding factory for the new type that extends the restaurant class. So, as long as the products we are serving belong to the same family, the burger family, we don't need to go past the factory method pattern. However, suppose we introduce a new family, a new product, pizzas for example. In this case, we will still have two or three types of burgers, but in addition to this, we will also have two or three types of pizzas. The intuitive solution to this new requirement would be to generalize the product interface and create multiple versions of these products. What do I mean by this? Well, instead of having a burger interface, we will have a product interface or any generic term that represents both burgers and pizzas. This interface will be extended by the several types of products we have. In this case, we will have four products, two types of burgers and two types of pizzas. Then we'll be forced to add a request or input of some sort to our existing factory method and let it decide which product a specific restaurant or factory should serve. We can clearly see the issue with this implementation as it takes us back to the initial problem we tried to solve in the last video by applying the factory method pattern. Now, some of you may be wondering, how did we manage to violate solid principles even though we created a factory method? Well, you see in this particular example, a single factory is not enough. And that is where we should start thinking about scaling up our implementation from a factory method to an abstract factory design. To do this, let's bring back our burger interface and create a separate interface called pizza. This interface will be implemented by the oriental pizza and classic pizza classes. You see, the first thing the abstract factory pattern suggests is to explicitly declare interfaces for each distinct product or family we have, and then make all variants of these products follow those interfaces. The next suggested move is to create inside our abstract factory, which in our case is the restaurant class, a list of creation methods or factory methods, one for each abstract product we have. In this example, we have two abstract products or two product families, the burger and the pizza interfaces, hence we will have two factory methods. Now, each concrete factory we have or restaurant class in this example will return a product or interface of a particular kind. That is how we decouple the creation of our products from the part that is actually using it with the help of the abstract factory pattern. Moreover, the users or clients of our application can now work with any concrete factory as long as it communicates with their objects via their corresponding abstract interfaces. Okay, let's go ahead now and take a look at the generalized class diagram structure of the abstract factory pattern, all while trying to relate it to our current example. The restaurant class here is the abstract factory itself, and this factory is implemented by concrete factories, which are the oriental restaurant and classic restaurant classes in this example. Each concrete factory is responsible for creating both products, which means that both factories should and must return the same abstract product or interface. However, the concrete product created should correspond or relate to the specific type of factory it was created from. So, to recap, we should use the abstract factory pattern when our code needs to work with various families of related products, but we don't want our code to depend on the concrete classes of those products as they might be unknown beforehand. That's why many designs start by using the factory method pattern as it is less complicated and later evolve towards an abstract factory design. And that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and I will see you in the next one.